desire is created. And that's why I say that crime is, is a social thing. What do I mean by that? You don't kill somebody for a pair of sneakers until sneakers have been invented. <laughs> you see? And put before your face and your desire pro provoked. You didn't have the desire before those things came into being. And so you must recognize that what happens then is the European provokes desires in African people by producing something and owning what he, what he uses to provoke the desire so he can pull your money out. And what does that mean then? That if we change our desires as people, if we get off of this gig that consumption means status, and this happens in African countries as well, and this idea that you can consume yourself into wealth, we can begin to change this equation. Sometimes that means you're going to have to institute very tough governments. And governments that on the surface appear to be repressive because they're going to block the importation of a lot of things. And that means then we, even within this country, black children and other children who are going to have to be trained out of a lot of the things they have been taught to desire. When you look at Elijah Muhammad, the, uh, the greatest psychologist this country has ever produced, when he demonized the white man, he was, it wasn't about hate. We don't understand the function of myth. You see, you give people a myth to bring about a certain behavior. When, you, when he demonized the white man, he then cut the appetite for white products off. And since he cut the appetite for white products off, the money that was spent feed, uh, buying for white folk could now be spent building up the nation itself. You see what I'm saying? So then, and the other, one other thing on that, so we must change desires as people. That's very, very important. We don't need, we don't need hardly 80% of the stuff we think we need, period. The other thing is that we are not going to ever be able to convince the masses of our people to go this way. It means then you're going to get small groups of people who literally will take over the economic uh, direction of a community. In other words, you, we can be conspiratorial. We can get together, use this susu that I talked about earlier. You can get 20 or 30 people and get those people to develop their money in such a way that they buy stores and shops and so forth. After a while, you can organize yourself so that these other people that own your communities will be run out and you can put them in there and begin to transform the community uh, economically and take it over. If you show success, and this is what I tell nationalists, it's not enough to tell black people nationalism and talk about it. If you can build real businesses, people will come to you and say, how did you do it? One more thing. If you use geometric growth, if 10 people learn a lesson and teach 10 more and 10 more, within a few short years, you could have your kind of people all over a nation and in control of the major political and social instruments in that nation. And then you can rise to national power and change the direction of the country. Read Machiavelli. Read these whiteys who tell the whiteys how to run the game and use the tactics themselves. We need to read Clausewitz, Liddell Hartz, and these other writers on military, economic strategy, and, and all these other kinds of things. We need, and when you read, say, by way of deception, for instance, this gentleman who belonged to the Israeli uh, Mossad, probably the top intelligence agency in the world, that literally has this way in the world, killing anybody he feels like it when he wants to. And of course, he states up front, and they, in fact, their title is, by way of deception. That's their motto. A small group of people cannot rule a large group of people unless they deceive them. That's the only way it can be done. The midget cannot rule the giant unless the giant thinks that he's a midget uh, and, and thinks the midget is a what? Is a giant. That's why I said we have to be reversed. And we got a 10% white population with a big population of black folk, and we think of white folk as big, the man, and this kind of stuff. And here we are, and we got all of these resources, and we have people who don't have resources. We see them as rich, and we see ourselves as poor. We have to be turned around, you see. And so they recognize very clearly that the only way they can win 
is by way of deception. That's why the devil is called what? The great deceiver. That's his chief method. And that's why Elijah Muhammad calls the white man what? The devil. That's why he talks of him as a trichnologist. Because he knows the, the very weapon of a minority of people must be trichnology and must be what? Deception. And the, when you read in this book, then this Israeli will tell you that the, the Israelites say one thing, me first, everything for what? Israel, nothing else matters. And we will do everything for Israel, no matter what happens. And that's why they are vicious. That's why other people fear them. That's why they've beaten uh, Hitler at being vicious to other people. And then, of course, they run the sight game. They've given this world their so-called religion, which is, of course, we know is an African-based religion. You see, I have a gentleman doing the research right now can show you that many of the black hymns that we sang in church are repeats of phrases sung to Egyptian gods. I mean, right down to white horses and chariots going across the sky and the whole number because they were infiltrated right into the Old Testament from Moses, who was an Egyptian, right into uh, Christianity and, of course, circled back on us as people. So we have to learn then how to use those methods and we have to learn how to see through deception. One of the problems we run against, and I find people having this problem often, when you use the word conspiracy, typically, of course, people will catch you up on that word. One of the things we must recognize that you really don't need a cloak and dagger thought out conference to have this program take place. And this is a part of the slickness of the system, you see. When you have people who operate on the same value system with the same goals in mind, right? And have the same outlook on life. They then can create very similar or the same effects even though they don't know each other personally. Even though they never met each other personally. You see what I'm saying? And of course, so how they pull this conspiracy off without appearing to meet or coming together, so you can point it at them, uh, is that by inculcating certain common values, and one of the things I was talking about, the definition of education and the attitudes toward education, because many of our parents and even black professionals are still operating with those definitions in their head, in effect, you carry out the wishes of the system without even realizing that this is the case. So it's very difficult to break through that kind of barrier. So you're going to have to develop a means by which, in a sense, you literally save the people without them even knowing they're at war or being saved. And this, this is going to take some stuff.